Hello students, now in this video let us see the properties of congruences. So let me take that as a theorem that let A, B, C and D be any integer, be any integers, integers and let and let M be any m be any positive integer m be any positive integer okay then then the first one a congruence to a modulo m second property if a congruence to B modulo M, then B congruence to A modulo M. Third property, if A congruence to B modulo M and B congruence to C modulo M, then a congruence to C modulo M. Okay. The next, if A congruence to B modulo M and C congruence to D modulo M, then then A plus C congruence to B plus D modulo M and AC congruence to BD modulo M. Fifth, if A congruence to B modulo M, then A plus C congruence to B plus C modulo M. And AC congruence to BC modulo M. Okay. Next, sixth property. If A congruence to B modulo M and C greater than 0, then AC congruence to BC modulo M. Okay. Seventh property. If A congruence to B modulo M, then A raise to K congruence to B raise to K modulo M. For K is what? From set of positive integers that are set of, that is a set of natural number we can say. Now let us prove these one, one by one. So proof. Now what the first say a congruence to a modulo m. A, b, c, d are any integers. Fine. <coughs> so first given a a b any integer any integer. Okay. We know that we know that 0 is divisible by 0 is divisible by any non-zero integer any non-zero integer every non-zero integer is a divisor of 0 that is m divides 0 that can be written as m divides a minus a as a minus a is what? 0. A belongs to what? Z. A is any integer then A minus A will be what? 0. So, as M divides A minus A, therefore by definition of congruence, by definition, by definition, what can I say? A congruence to A modulo M. A congruence to A modulo M. This is the 
answer here now let us take the proof of second sorry second one what the second says if a congruence to b modulo m then b congruence to a modulo m and second given that a congruence to b modulo m so by definition this gives m divides a minus b so if m divides a minus b by definition of divisibility a minus b is equal to m times some integer k is what an integer now the same one can be written as b minus a is equal to m into what minus k where minus k is also what an integer so this gives m divides b minus a that gives b congruence to a modulo m these are what the steps to prove this this is very obvious here now the next is what transitivity now here it is nothing but same this is reflexivity this is symmetry and this also what a transitivity so third one given a congruence to b modulo m so this gives m divides a minus b call it as equation number 1 and and c congruence sorry b b congruence to c modulo m so this gives m divides what b minus c call it as equation number 2 okay therefore by property of divisibility property of divisibility by property of divisibility <coughs> from this 1 and 2 we get m divides a minus b plus b minus c that is m divides a minus c that is a congruence to c modulo m a congruence to c modulo m this is by what by definition by definition of what congruence fine now the next fourth part let us prove the fourth part now in fourth part a congruence to b modulo m c congruence to d modulo m fine so given given what a congruence to b modulo m so this gives m divides a minus b call it as equation number 1 and c congruence to d modulo m so this gives m divides c minus d call it as equation number 2 now if now from 1 and 2 1 and 2 we get m divides this a minus b plus c minus b that is same as m divides now this additive part we will take in one bracket and minus sign let me take from these two it will be b plus d so if this is the case therefore by definition by definition what can we say this one gives a plus c congruence to what b plus d a plus c is the first part and this will be what remainder modulo m modulo m okay now <coughs> similarly this one we have to prove so for that now this one how does this one can be written 1 implies a minus b is equal to what m k1 for k1 belongs to what z now this can be written as now this c is again an integer so let us multiply throughout by c so ac minus bc is equal to m into c into k1 okay that is same as ac minus bc 
equal to m into k3 i am giving name to this c k1 as k3 where k3 is equal to what c k1 that is also an integer fine now similarly what about 2 this 2 implies <coughs> let me call this as equation number 3 i use this now again from 2 from 2 what we get c minus d is equal to suppose m k2 for k2 belongs to what z so this gives again now let me multiply by b so bc minus bd is equal to what m b k2 so this is what bc minus bd is equal to what m k4 call it as equation number 4 where k4 is equal to what b k2 that is also belongs to what set of integer now from 3 and 4 from 3 and 4 what we get from 3 and 4 look at here ac minus bc bc minus bd so let us add them what does it gives adding ac minus bc plus bc minus bd this is left hand side and the right hand side let me take m common will be k3 minus sorry k3 plus k4 addition we are doing now this is get cancelled here so what we get here these two terms are left ac minus bd is equal to what m into suppose k m into k where this k is what k3 plus k4 that is what an integer that is also an integer so here look at here we get ac minus bd is equal to m into k means this m divides ac minus bd so this gives this m divides ac minus bd that is same as to say ac congruence to bd modulo m modulo m this is the proof here now <coughs> similarly let us go for fifth for fifth one for fifth one what we get given given a congruence to b modulo m okay so this gives m divides a minus b okay call it as equation number one now here here let me add and subtract c so this gives me m divides a plus c minus b plus c may i write this as such now therefore by definition by definition what i get a plus c congruence to b plus c modulo m modulo m is this again now this one implies a minus b is equal to what m k1 for k1 belongs to set of integer fine therefore ac minus bc is equal to m c k1 that is same as ac minus bc is equal to m k3 m k3 or suppose m k2 where k2 is what c k1 this is what an integer fine therefore by definition by definition what can we write m divides ac minus bc that is same as to say ac minus bc congruence to, or ac congruence to ac minus bc or the <coughs> ac congruence to bc modulo m ac minus bc congruence to 0 we can write or the ac congruence to bc modulo m fine now the next one sixth one the sixth one 
will be what given a congruence to b modulo m so this gives m divides a minus b. that gives a minus b is equal to m k1 k1 belongs to z fine so now this can be written as ac minus bc is equal to mc k1 that is c is what greater than 0 here given to us mc divides what ac minus bc here you can remember c is positive therefore by definition therefore by definition what can we write ac here ac minus bc sorry ac congruence to bc modulo mc so ac congruence to bc modulo mc okay now the last one let me take the seventh one here for seventh one now let me write that one here we will use the now that is uh, that k belongs to what set of positive integers that seventh part is what with us that is <coughs> what is that sorry if a congruence to b modulo m then a raised to k congruence to b raised to k modulo m and where this k belongs to what set of positive integer that is set of natural numbers so for that let me use the principle of mathematical induction so the proof of this seventh one proof seventh one we use mathematical induction we use mathematical induction as for k equal to 1 result is obvious as a congruence to b modulo m is already there so if k is 1 then it is same so result is obvious now for k is equal to 2 then we know that we know that if now just we have seen here a congruence to b modulo m and c congruence to d modulo m is there then a c congruence to b d modulo m therefore what we get if i put up here that c is what a and b is what d is what b itself that is same as a into a congruence to b into b as a congruence to b modulo m is there so let me take product with the same one it will be modulo m that is a square congruence to b square modulo m so here the result is true for k is equal to 2 also or this can be written as given what is given to us a congruence to b modulo m modulo m so this gives m divides a minus b so if m divides a minus b so m also divides a minus b into a plus b that is same as m divides a square minus b square so that is same as a square congruence to what b square modulo m as there is a property a divides b then a divides bx where x is what a non-zero integer so here a and b are non-zero then a plus b is also non-zero or if any one of them zero still it is non-zero this is the case either you can write this one or this one for k is equal to 2 <coughs> so thus thus result is result is true for k is equal to 2 
Now assume that assume that result is true for result is true for k is equal to what r that is a congruence to b modulo m that is if a congruence to b modulo m then a raised to r congruence to b raised to r modulo m also let k is equal to what r plus 1 then a raised to r plus 1 is what this is equal to a raised to r into a now you know a raised to r congruence to what b raised to r fine and this a congruence to b so b modulo m so this is what this is nothing but what <coughs> this can be written as this is b raised to r plus 1 this is equivalent to b raised to r plus 1 what modulo m therefore a raised to r plus 1 congruence to this is congruent fine this is also congruent congruence to b raised to r plus 1 modulo m thus thus result is true for result is true for k is equal to r plus 1 therefore by principle of mathematical induction principle of mathematical induction mathematical induction what can we say if a congruence to b modulo m then a raise to k congruence to b raise to k modulo m for all k belongs to set of positive integer that is nothing but set of natural number as the principle of mathematical induction can be proved for the can be proved for which one for natural numbers okay so here we have proved the basic properties of congruences now and here we will stop for today next video we will see some more properties thank you